Hi, welcome to the Daddy Curbs Farm. This is another beekeeping episode, and I want to talk about a few things. We're going to go back to the bee yard, look at some bees, but also I want to mention about physical barriers or the mental barriers, barriers between you and your activity, in this case, beekeeping. The more space, the more challenges, the more hurdles you have between you and your activity, the less likely you are to do it, maybe at all, or to do it very well. And that's been one of my challenges with beekeeping over the years. And let me just demonstrate that. My boxes for the tall hives are in here. Frames are in here. This is my main house. Back porch, laundry room, freezer, I have frames and honey also in this house. That's a small house that uh, we call the guest house. And then in order to beekeep, my, uh, so my, my outfit is also stored in this house, the guest house. But then in order to beekeep, I need to go through the horse area, which is now two fences. So that's two more physical barriers and then go a hundred yards, uh, which is not that great of a distance, but when it's hot and there's equipment in four different places and you have to go through all those barriers, it makes wanting to beekeep a little harder. It's more difficult. So that's what I've been through this morning already, is just getting prepared mentally and physically to get out there and get something done. And on days when there's a lot of other things going on, all those barriers may keep me from actually getting this task accomplished. So I wanted to give you that bit before we actually get out into the bee yard. I use my little blue farm truck because uh, my golf cart's out of commission right now and I just like to be able to bring whatever I need out here so that just just in case I get in here and I need to put a new box on or I need extra frames, it's going to be sitting here in the bed of the truck instead of having, again, the barrier of walking 100 yards to the house, get the equipment, walk back. Uh, it's going to start cooling down here in Texas pretty soon, but right now through August and the early part of September, whenever something requires you to spend more time outside, you start thinking about that. Do I really want to walk 100 yards back to the house? Do I really want to walk out to the bee yard? So again, those barriers. But here we are at the bee yard. We're going to get into the uh, vertical hives today. You saw uh, the last couple videos where I was getting into the long hives. Where are they? Somewhere over here. There they are. Uh, so we're not going to open those today. We're going to check the condition of those four remaining vertical hives. I do have a couple of boxes with frames, my smoker that was lit, doesn't look like it stayed lit, um, an extra deep box, probably won't need that at all, but just in case, and a box of the towels for beetles, some smoker fuel, a brush, matches, things like that, and so let's get out here and look into each one of these. You know, people who use fuels that are made to light easy and stay lit, um, good for you. I, I don't because it costs extra, but I really should because I'm spending a lot of time out here, uh, a lot of times just trying to keep this smoker lit. Sometimes I get it lit right away and it works beautifully for a couple hours and other times it doesn't. I'm really enjoying doing these beekeeping videos. I think I explained that in the last video, but it's been a lot of fun sharing this with you over the years and, uh, I want to start doing more of it on my channel. If you're in favor of that, just let me know in the comments. Just have a little dialogue. Let's encourage each other. I know I'm not a perfect beekeeper. It's okay. I'm not ashamed of it. I make mistakes. But what I really love is sharing my story to help uh, other people feel like it's okay to make mistakes. And that sometimes people just can't beekeep on their own and they want to see it online and they want to see it happen in a real storyline instead of you know perfection like a TV show a produced documentary I'm just a real guy out here doing stuff and I mess up sometimes
Got it. Our first goal is just to open these up and see what the condition of the hives, the condition is, hives are, whatever. We're going to get in and check them out. And um, there are local beekeepers claiming that there's a little bit of a flow going on. There's something out here. I don't see anything. But something's producing nectar and pollen. There's a list. I saw a list somewhere where this area, what's blooming. But no, I don't see anything blooming on my place. But within two miles, there's probably something blooming. Last week, we saw a little bit of nectar in uh, this horizontal hive. And so I'm very curious in the vertical hives that haven't been disturbed how they're doing, how much they're producing. So we're going to get into this one first, which is the Gretchen Bee Ranch hive. Let's just get in there and see. We got a little bit of an uh-oh situation. It looks like probably there's some wax moths that have taken hold at least you can see there's wax moth larva right there that was in a cocoon and there's some larva there. Well I didn't expect that there was going to be a need for another box because we just haven't had any flow for so long because it's been so hot and dry for so long. There's definitely lots of room in here. Let me get my frame hanger. This one's on a double deep. This outside frame has a tiny little bit of wax built up on it but nothing significant and the next frame in they have some honey already starting uh, to develop there I'm gonna move these over inside here that has a, a lot of wax some honey some nectar and pollen So the hive right now, just as far as resources on those first three frames that I pulled, are looking pretty good. They do have some of those little crazy ants in here too. Again, the fourth one in. Nectar, pollen, and honey. So looking pretty good so far, except for the, the obvious... Uh, wax moth let's see here so here is a frame that has some brood there's larva some capped larva or capped brood and just glancing to see if I see a queen on there I don't oh I do there she is I don't know hopefully you can see her She's got a little green dot on her back. She's in there. She's looking good. Very good. Uh, I don't... You know, I feel like... What am I going to do about that whole wax moth situation? It may not be overblown yet. There are high beetles too. This is one of those traps that I put in there, the cloth traps, and there's a good number of high be hive beetles. All right, I'm going to pull this top box, set it aside, and look down into that bottom box, see how we're doing. Now, my queen, unless she just went down, my queen's in this top box. I'm going to put her on, uh, on a board over here. Let me give you a look at that. This is that inner cover. I laid that inner cover there. There is a hole in the middle of it, but it's sitting on top of the lid. So for the most part, this is a bottom board, keeping that queen in there while I look over here into this box. Just trying to keep her safe. There's four wooden frames and six plastic frames in here. And I'm not promoting the plastic frames necessarily. Um, they are the smaller cell frames, so that is a benefit, I think. Um, 
The bees are building on it just fine. There's plenty of honey on that one. Wax moths and beetles, or wax moths at least, don't like the plastic frames as much because they can't eat into it like they do the wooden frames. That's a very heavy one. And this one, this one has honey and lots and lots of pollen stores. The Oh, look at all that honey on that side. That's nice. Pollen stores that they make their uh, bee bread out of. And I'm kneeling down on my knees because I don't like bending over so much. It's one of the reasons I like the idea of the horizontal hives. Less bending and twisting. A little easier on my back. So, okay, another deep frame, wooden frame. A lot of pollen and honey. The bee bread. A lot of bee resources. Not so much, not so much brood on that one. There was brood on that one frame up top. I got one stinger in my glove. I know sometimes bees perish. I try, I try to do better about, you know, keeping them from getting squashed or feeling like they need to sting me. I'm gonna see if I see any eggs. I kind of don't expect to right now, quite honestly, just because it's been so hot. The queen hopefully says, we don't need bees right now. So there is a little bit of brood on this frame, but it's mostly maturing brood. Capped larva. I don't see any eggs. Again, kind of the same thing. No eggs, some capped larva, some pollen and nectar resources. I gotta look, look around my glasses. Makes it awkward. Okay. I didn't, I didn't expect, I don't expect in any of the hives to see a lot of brood. Like I said, because of all the um, hot, dry conditions we've had. But, uh... Let's see here. Okay. Same thing here. Bee bread, nectar, pollen. Not a lot of bees. Of course, it's in the middle of the day. There's a lot of bees. If whatever bees there are, there's going to be uh, some of them out flying around foraging. So, I did squash a few of the wax moths. Hopefully, that's not the start of an infestation. There were a few beetles, but I don't see any beetles running around. That's a good thing. Bees are kind of always fighting pests, and pests are always trying to get a foothold. But hopefully, when if the colony is strong, they're in good shape, and they don't they don't get overrun. Looks like there's some wax larva or wax moth larva living inside that beetle trap. We're not going to put that one back in. Put a fresh one on right here. Get this guy back up here. <sighs> Sometimes I stop and ponder the situation because 
this hive right now is two deep boxes. They have resources in both boxes. They don't have enough brood. They really don't have enough bees. I could reduce that down to one box and they would probably be, be better off. But the question is, if we do have a flow coming on, which I don't know really where it's coming from. I'm just judging by the reports of other beekeepers in the area. If we do have a flow coming on, meaning nectar being available for the bees, they might need that space, but is it better for me to reduce that down to one for uh, a week or two? I'm talking myself into it, really. I think what I'm going to do is reduce that down to one box for the next week, and then um, we'll see at that point if they need to be built back up. So here we go. We're going to take that double deep down to one hopefully giving those bees a better chance to survive through the next few weeks and then we'll come out and put another box on. Taking mostly empty frames out. Don't stop. My queen was definitely sighted on one of those that went back into the hive. So we're in good shape there. Hopefully by reducing that down to one box, they'll get strong enough to push those moths and beetles out. And then in a, a week or two, they still have plenty of room to put nectar and pollen. In a week or two, I can put another box on or transfer them into one of these horizontal hives. Not really sure how that's going to go because I was talking to a beekeeper friend of mine and he suggested not to move anything unless it's a really really strong colony into uh, one of the a different any other box really until the weather gets a little bit cooler uh, he has he say, says that he has more luck with moving colonies from swarms or from from box to box whenever whatever type of moving when the weather's not quite so brutally hot and there's uh, resources are fewer we are going to disrupt our uh, garden spider friends we have one two of them hanging out here with a web in between they're gonna have to be moved I'm, I'm, I'm not going to place them anywhere but I'm going to disturb their web I came out prepared with boxes just in case and I actually think I'm gonna be removing boxes uh, they didn't they didn't have the flow These are all right here. These are all completely empty. So I'm going to take this box off. Let them get ready. When I say get ready, I'm going to let them fill some up. And then, uh, again, if they have too much space to work with, then that gives the the pest moths and beetles more room to work. This hive is a double deep with uh, looks like two different size mediums on top. The one I just took off was a six and five eighths. This one's a seven and five eighths. Let's see what they. It looks like they've done pretty well in this box. So one side has a lot of honey on it. The other side is empty get in here and see what the other yeah that one's probably 90% honey on one side 80% on the other 
they're definitely working the honey on this frame this box when it's hot and dry I don't do a lot of uh, in inspections oh there's my queen she's up here very good sometimes if I see her I like to put her in a queen cage and put her to the side that way I don't have to worry about her when I'm digging around that's interesting this up here is all honey it just goes to show that the queen can be anywhere uh, there's no brood nest up here this is all honey yeah that's a lot of honey so I'm gonna look it looks like the box below does not have a lot in it I think this is one that I put a deep on underneath this to see if they would build out and I don't think they did so let's get into that box down below I'm gonna place that queen right on top so they can see her and smell her my smoke went out again I had put some empty ones in thinking they might build comb, but it was just a bad few months for them to build much of anything. Yeah, there's nothing going on in this middle box. This colony's doing pretty good down in this lower box. There's uh, plenty of pollen in there. There's several empty frames in the middle, so they have plenty of room to build. I'm going to reduce this one down by one deep box. Actually down to just one deep and one seven and five eighths medium. Someday I'm getting rid of the seven and five eighths altogether, but for now I have them. I'm going to put that back on top and uh, let them build back up. I'll make sure my queen gets back down in there. She's in here, so I'm gonna open it and watch her crawl down in there. Go on, lady. There she goes. Those were just spider webs, but just making sure they weren't the, uh, the webs of the moth. I didn't see any moths or beetles for that matter in this one. So that one's reduced now by two whole boxes. This is the second hive here on this stand and that one is two deeps and a medium. The medium box already just from the top looks like it's about half full. So we're going to take it off and look down in here and see if they need that second, uh, second deep box. And we do have the queen excluder on this one, so theoretically, there should be no queen up here in the top. Okay, I can tell I'm not going to be okay in this hive without better smoke. I'll be right back. I do see some beetles in the trap up here, in the towel trap. The trap's working. The bees came out a little bit more aggressive on this one. I'm gonna take this queen excluder off. Yeah, they, they definitely are a little more defensive they're, they're not they're not as bad as what some hives have been but uh, whenever I hear that tone and I see them coming out in large numbers like that uh, it makes me makes me a little nervous actually so I want to make sure that I'm paying attention to what's going on well, that one actually had a lot of honey on it I just dripped honey look at that they built that out real fat Actually, they built it up off the foundation. That's interesting. So that one's empty. The one next to it is very full. 
as far as big fat honey honeycomb big fat honeycomb on that side looks like they're putting honey in on this side as well let's see if they have any brood They do have some brood on this side, uh, mostly larva. I don't see eggs. They do have some younger larva on this side. Again, I, I don't see eggs, but I see younger larva. Yep, I do see eggs actually. Okay, good. So they have an active brood nest up here in the in the second box, and I can tell just tell by looking that that bottom box has at least the same amount of activity. I don't need to get down there. They're using both boxes. Uh, there are a few frames without as much on them. I'll move those to the outside. Scoot this brood nest toward the center. Let me check this one out. Oh yeah, that's a good brood pattern right there. Filling it up. Making baby bees. I don't need to dig around for a queen. I saw eggs. She's in there. At least she has been within the last three days. Okay, this hive is actually doing really well as far as not having very much resources out available, nectar and pollen but they are doing a great job with keeping up with brood making baby bees all right good job guys girls mostly girls they do have some pollen on their legs so they're getting it from somewhere this one has that honey on it i'm going to put that one back in here on the end and I'm going to get one of these other frames that I took out of that other hive that has some wax already on it and put in there to give them a, just a head start on that frame. And our top box back on because they're actually using it. Oh no! Now, if you were paying attention, you noticed if it was caught in camera. I squashed a few bees that time. It's one of the reasons I think I'm going to like the horizontal hives better. Is just that without having to lift those boxes, you know, those 40, 50, 60 pound boxes, and be careful not to squash bees, I just believe that the... Sorry, I thought I had a bee in my veil. I might actually. I think I do. I did have a bee in my veil. And here's the truth about bee stings for me. I don't mind getting stung. I just don't want stung on my face. One more hive to inspect. And it's the one that has the spiders on it. There you go. I don't want to hurt her. I just don't want her right here. Get out of the way so I don't step on you. You got one more over here. There she, there she goes. She's on the ground. She's walking away.
looking good up here. It looks like they're using this space well. I do have the queen excluder, but I have two mediums here. Let's see what the the one on the Okay, this one's got some weight to it, so they got honey up in here. This one looks really, really nice. I can see honey. There's some empty space, but I can see lots of comb, lots of honey going in here. I start talking and yelling and the bees come out. They don't like that. So the resources up on top look pretty good. I'm pulling one that looks empty just to see if they're started at all on it. They do have a little coating of wax going on, but that that frame is empty. And so they it looks like they probably have three, three and a half frames that are mostly empty and the rest of it they're building uh, comb and honey. We're going to get down into the bottom just long enough to see if we need to reduce this down to one deep instead of two. Here's that metal queen excluder. There's a lot of empty in this middle box. They do have some something going on here, but there's a lot of empty down here. This one down here has honey and some beetles. I see one beetle, two beetles, three beetles. Squash that one. Okay, there's another one. All right, so we have we definitely have some beetles in this hive. So there's empty frames, partially full, empty, partially full. Looks like I checkerboarded or staggered this one. Do they have any brood up here? That was a little bit of cross comb there. There's one that has a lot of, oh, looks like they have a little queen cup started on the bottom of that one. That's some wonky comb going the wrong direction. That's all honey, uh, potentially honeycomb. They do have another queen cup here. A lot of honey. Looks like they're building a lot of honey in this middle box. And another queen cup. No queen cells, just queen cups. That's three of them, four of them. I see four of them. They have a lot of bees down in that, that bottom box. Another queen cup on the bottom of this one. That's a total of five. Here's that beetle trap towel. You can see a good number of beetles stuck in there, so I'll put a new towel in there. I might be leaving two mini boxes on this one, but sometimes you just get a little gut feeling, and I think this one's okay. Hopefully that gut feeling's right. I'm gonna get another be uh, beetle trap towel put in here catch a few more beetles we'll put it right up here at the top right under the queen excluder and you guys are sitting on the queen excluder so I'm gonna have to move the camera Now I said we weren't going to open the horizontal hive, but I'm kind of curious if maybe some of these frames here that I took out would be useful to replace some of the frames in there. It's only one way to know. I got to open it up and look. Basically the goal is for me to see if there are any empty frames that I could put some frame with, uh, with wax and honey. Okay, those are definitely not empty. Some of these really dark ones, eventually I'm going to take out and, and throw away. I don't want uh, 
all these super dark frames like this one that one's gonna go away I think overall the bees enjoy me more when it's a horizontal layout and I'm not pulling entire sections of their home off I can take this one out and put one in there that has uh, honey on it I might just insert a couple of frames Alright, looks like most of them down this way. I know that most of them down here have uh, foundation, wax, honey, brood. So I'm going to put a, a few of those at the end here. Some of those other frames, instead of trying to take them back to the house and put them in the freezer, I'm just going to put them in here and see how these bees utilize those resources. I need to take some effort now to get some of these boxes and frames out of the bee yard and stored properly. I know Mama Curbs isn't back here, but she would appreciate it if my bee yard weren't a mess. So I'm going to gather up whatever boxes and frames I don't need and put them into the back of the truck and take them back to the house. Well, we're back at the house. It's not all organized yet. It's still sitting in the little blue truck over here. But I wanted to end this video by saying thank you for being with me. Thanks for watching these videos and thanks for sharing them with your friends and family. That means a lot to me. Here on the Daddy Curbs Farm, I believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. Your story counts because you count. Thank you so much for being a part of my story through this video and letting me be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon.